Being a car cleaner, I get to try lots of fancy products and I love finding that hidden gem that raises the bar to the next level. But there's been one product in particular that I have stuck with since day one, and that's Autoglim Super Resin Polish. And in this video, I'm gonna be sharing some of my top tips and top reasons why I still think to this day, this is the most important product for any car cleaner. And in this video, I'm gonna be teaching you how to polish a car by hand, and I'm gonna show you how to get the best results just from using this one product. Coming up in today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at the nation's best-selling polish and one that 99.9% .9 of all Britons have somewhere in their shed. And also, I'm going to show you how to polish a car by hand using just a few simple techniques. Plus, I'm going to cover some of the do's and some of the don'ts when polishing a car. So why is this one of the best-selling polishes of all time? Well, maybe it's got something to do with the simplicity behind the polish. You can take dull paintwork and make it look pretty impressive with minimal effort, and it will give your paintwork a massive boost. But I will emphasise the word boost because it's only a temporary fix. It's nothing permanent. Super Resin Polish has been a firm favourite amongst the classic car community, and people that have got cars with older, tired-looking paintwork tend to use this as they want instant results for those special occasions, like weddings, or more importantly, car shows. And for beginners who want to learn the basics of polishing, it can be overwhelming when you have to search for all these various compounds. You've got heavy compounds, finishing compounds, so it's a great place to start if you've never touched a car's paintwork before. So ultimately, the risk of causing damage is minimal. So I remember back in the day, Autoglim Super Resin Polish was one of the first ever products I got my hands on when I was practicing car cleaning, before I even knew what I wanted to do with my life. And I remember my dad had a Rover 400, it was dark red. He's like, Dave, make it look good. So I remember cleaning it for hours on end, and then I was polishing, and I used about half a bottle. I didn't read the instructions. We've all done it before, don't lie. And I took a step back after hours and hours of buffing it off, and I was like, whoa. This car looks quite impressive. Well, it didn't, it was a Rover 400, but you know what I mean? The shine looked amazing. And that got me thinking, maybe I could make some money out of this. A few facts about this polish. Number one, it contains a few light abrasives that help gently cleanse and refine the paintwork. So it's not to be confused with a normal cutting compound. So ideally, it's not something you're going to need a machine polisher for. Number two, it has fillers that mask up minor defects. And while it can't fix deep scratches that have made their way to the base coat, it can fill in the imperfections in the clear coat, making it a good polish for the used car market. And number three, this also contains a protective wax to lock in that shine. So being one of Britain's best sellers, it will come under fire from a few people. And it does get the odd complaint like this. One of the most common things people say to me is, why do I keep getting loads of powder on my car when I'm using the polish? Well, there's a couple of reasons. Number one, could just be the weather. It could be too warm to apply it. And you do find this happens quite a lot in the direct sunlight. That's why they put on the bottle, don't do it in the direct sunlight. You need to have cool, controlled conditions if you want to get the best finish for your car. What you're going to find is if it's too hot, it's going to dry the product out too quickly. And that's when you get issues and that's when it dries out and starts powdering. Another reason you may get powdering is because you may not have washed out the lid after use. So what happens is you finish it, you put the bottle away and you accidentally leave the lid open. And what happens is that liquid structure around the edge starts to dry out. So when it comes to pouring it back out onto an applicator pad, not only does the liquid come out, but also does the white powder. And immediately you're going to be putting that onto your paintwork. Another key reason why you might be getting loads of powder is the fact you just might be using too much product. You might have this intention of thinking, okay, if I chuck loads of polish on, it's gonna give me a glossier finish. But that's not the case at all. Less is more when it comes to polishing. And that also goes for compounding as well. To get started, all you're going to need is an applicator pad, some polish, and a few microfiber cloths. Before applying any polish, make sure you give the bottle a good shake to mix up all the abrasives. And for goodness sake, make sure the lid is securely on or people will start to ask questions. But fear not, because in my previous video, I talk about washing machines and I go through all my top tips for removing polish from your cloths. So what we're going to do here is apply a tiny bit of polish. So we've got a little bit here on the pad. I'm going to fold it over and start working it into the paintwork. Now we're just going to be going in a crisscross pattern today. And we're not going to go massively on loads of sections. We're going to pretty much break down this into four quarters. 
because that way we can keep control of what's going on and we don't want to leave it on too long because like I said the last thing you want to get is powdering on it so once you've got it to a level that you're going to be happy with wait for it to haze and then we're going to buff it off when polishing apply light pressure and it doesn't matter if you work in straight lines or circles provided you just don't go too aggressive and while you won't get the same results as a completely decontaminated surface you will still get great results nevertheless and if you have to do this on a warm day then you can always work on the shady side then move the car the other way round once completed okay so as you can see this panel is looking good we're now just going to gently buff it off and you can see already what happens is because i haven't overloaded it i've got no powder and bearing in mind it's about 23 degrees we've got a little bit of cloud coverage today but it is still pretty warm and look at that that is fantastic beautiful so i'm sure a lot of you who are car cleaners now probably know that auto glim might have a little bit of a deal breaker with this product and that's the durability because as a standalone product you're just not going to get enough protection from it so I'm always going to recommend that you either apply a wax or a ceramic spray on top if you want to lock in that shine for longer. So in the past I've tried out using super resin polish with a machine polisher and although it looked fantastic it still won't give you any extra points for durability. So that's why I'm using the rapid ceramic spray and I made a video on this comparing it to the turtle wax graphene flex wax and I won't give away the winner of the video but it's definitely one you should go and check out. I think for beginners who are new to car cleaning this can be a real lifesaver and when it comes to impressing your clients the end result is all that matters and this product would get you there. And in terms of something that can give you confidence that you made a good first impression and it will help you get repeat business, it's a winner. And so what if it doesn't last a lifetime? As a business you want regular clients and this can make a nice little upsell too. And I've lost count how many bottles I bought over the last 15 years but as long as it keeps my clients happy, then I won't stop either.